hello. Okay. Oops, sorry, I'm knocking the table. Okay, so today we are going to talk about, sorry, I gotta turn my phone on, don't disturb. Um, we are gonna talk about supplies. So, if you're watching this on replay, please make a comment if you have any questions. I'm happy to answer more questions. I feel like I pretty thoroughly go through things, but if you have extra questions, um, just leave them in the comments and I will respond or you can just direct message me. Um, the people that are here live, I can see your questions. So if you have them, you can just leave them as a comment. You don't need to use the question box. Um, just leave a comment and I will get to those. All right, so I'm just gonna go through the suggested supplies list that's in the pattern. Um, so if you have questions as I'm working up through this list, let me know. Um, the first thing on the list is a needle. You have to have a needle. Um, there is a lot of different needle options. Um, I really like a size five needle. Um, DMC brand is my favorite. They're sharp, they're thin. The only issue is the eye of the needle. Um, it's a little bit smaller, um, which is fine for me. But if you're brand new, you might want to go with a tapestry needle because the eye is a little bit bigger. I was just trying to find, I have my pin cushions. <laughs> um, so a size five, it's gonna be really hard to see in videos, but the eye of the needle only goes to here. So it's really little. Where a tapestry needle, this is not a tapestry needle, this is something smaller. But the eye of the needle is a little bit bigger. So side by side, like this one comes to here and this one com the other one comes to here. So the eye is a little bit bigger on a tapestry needle um, or a chenille needle. Um, so if you think you have problems threading needles, get a tapestry needle or a chenille needle. They'll be a little bit easier for you to thread. <laughs> I couldn't think of the word. Anyways, any, really, if you have a needle that you like to sew with, that works. It, you don't have to have some special needle. Um, I do like a skinnier needle just so it doesn't make big holes because like this one, let me just see if we can see these two side by side. Oop. Do you see that thickness difference? Like this is a size five and this is, I don't know what size it is, but it's quite a bit thicker. So if you have a thicker needle, it's gonna make bigger holes in your fabric. So I would go with something a little bit skinnier, but if all you have is fat needles, then it's fine. All right, fabric. Um, I keep going back to, I always think that I like linen better and then I go back to using like a Kana cotton and I'm like, oh yeah, I like that. <laughs> so a Kana cotton or Kona cotton, it's K-O-N-A, it's a brand, um, is like this really thick woven cotton. It's hundred percent cotton. You see how you can like barely see through it. It's like pretty tightly woven. It holds stitches really nicely, especially when you're doing like detailed work. Kana cotton is the way to go. They make so many different colors. Um, they have like four different whites, so it's a good time. Um, that's normally what I use. If you are a beginner, you could also do something like a linen. It's quite a bit thinner. But you see how you can see through that? It's not as tightly woven. You can see through it a lot more. Um, but this is also really great, especially if you have like a quilter's cotton, you can double it. So you've got like the quilter's cotton and then your linen on top. This doesn't hold stitches quite as well because it's a little bit, um, it's a little bit looser in the weave. Still great, I've used it plenty of times. I love it, I own it, I do use it. Um, but if I had my pick, I would go with the Kana cotton. Um, but you can use anything that has no stretch. So you could use an old sheet, you could use a pillowcase. Um, I would just avoid fabrics with stretch. So like 
uh, t-shirt material is not great to learn on just because it's stretchy and it's a little bit harder to work with. So anything without stretch is good to go. Okay. All right. Next on our list is thread and embroidery floss. I'm going to tell you right now that using cheap floss might feel like you're saving money in the long run, but the patience that it takes to use it, I don't think is worth it. DMC threads are, you can get them when they're on sale for like 50 cents, 45 cents sometimes, but they're like 70 cents. I think it's worth it to just buy a good thread versus like getting some cheap pack off Amazon um, because the quality makes a difference. When you're using a cheaper thread, it is going to not easier. It's going to shred more easily. Um, it's just, it's not super fun to work with. So I highly recommend getting a like a brand name thread. So DMC or Anchor, Cosmo's a really good one. Um, I think that's pretty, I don't know. In the US, that's about it. Um, DMC it looks like this. I nearly always buy DMC. I have a couple Anchor and I have a couple Cosmo, um, but DMC is my go-to just because they're so easy to find. Anchor for a while had their thread on like a bobbin. So it was like one of those cylinder bobbins like sewing thread. Um, I think they've gone back to this because they were selling it all like really discounted for a while. So anyways, thread. This is just a random one that was on my desk, but DMC, the number end is where you'll want to pull from. And I'll talk about this again when we start stitching, but when you're using DMC thread, if you see an end up here and an end down here, always use the number end. You're gonna be less likely to have knots. Occasionally there's still a knot, but it's less likely if you pull from this end. So when you pull it, it just pulls. A piece of thread out. Um, I know a lot of people love bobbins. If you want to do that, feel free. I personally don't because I think that it is a waste of time. <laughs> and I don't like that when it's wrapped around the bobbin that it gets kinked. That bugs me. So I don't do that. Um, the other thing we are going to work with metallic thread this time. So metallic thread comes, I mean, this one has been used. So if they don't come like this, but they come in like a this like a long plastic tube where this one just has like the plastic on top and the plastic on bottom. This one is like a whole tube of plastic. It is messy. <laughs> it is a little difficult to work with, but we're going to do it. So, whoop. This is just kind of how I store mine. I usually just cut because these are six stranded just like um the regular embroidery thread. Um these are six stranded you can pull these apart and just use like one two three strands or whatever same with the metallic it comes the same way and it comes in different it comes six stranded as well so you can just use one or two so usually what i do is i keep it all together and i just cut you can see right here i've like cut pieces so i just cut like one at a time it's a little bit easier i don't know and then i just Hope for the best. I have not found a good way to store this. <laughs> it's just, it's just messy. It just is. So anyways, that's fun. We will have fun. Now that is an option, an optional one. If you decide you don't want to do metallic, that's okay. These ones are a little bit more expensive. They're closer to like $2 or $1.50. Um, but we'll use very little of it. So if you don't want to buy it, then that's okay. All right, um, embroidery hoop. So this pattern is a seven inch hoop. Um, you could size it up or down if you want it bigger or smaller, um, but hoops, let's talk about them. There is so many different options for embroidery hoops, anywhere from really cheap to pretty expensive. So it depends on your budget and how you want it to look when you're done. Um, the cheapest option is bamboo hoops. You can find them all over. I mean, I can find them at Walmart, at my Walmart. Um, they're at craft stores, 
all over. So bamboo hoops, they're kind of a lighter wood. Um, two things with bamboo is making sure um, when you're buying one that you look for one that you don't have gaps. So let me show you. Oh, let me try, hold on, Let's see if I can create a gap. So right here, you can kind of see there's like a gap. It's tight right here, and then there's a gap between them right here. So if you see any like that while you're at the store, put it back. You don't want that. Um, you want one that has as few gaps as possible. If you have a gap in your fabric or a gap in your hoops, then you're going to have problems keeping your hoop tight. So... Whenever possible, find a bamboo hoop without gaps. Um, if you if they only have hoops with hoops with gaps, that was weird words. Um, it's okay, you can fix it. Um, you can take the inner hoop and wherever, like this one has a has a slight gap right right here. So what you can do is take this inner hoop out and just get like a scrap of fabric a scrap of fabric and just wrap it around it a few times and that'll just um, fix that gap. Um, the other thing is making sure that your center stays in the center. So um, you can create gaps even if you bought it and it didn't have any gaps. If you move this center to like over here, it'll probably create a gap. These are not perfectly circular. <laughs> I am struggling with words today. These are not perfectly circular. So if you move this middle to over here, it might create gaps. So one thing that I like to do when I get hoops is I just go ahead and mark where the center is. If you didn't, if you don't, and I, and I mark it on the inner hoop because this we won't see. It'll be um, behind fabric or in the back of our project. Um, if you forget to do that, sometimes, I don't know if it'll show up in the video. Sometimes you can kind of see, well, it's pretty hard to see, but you can kind of see where the hardware lands on here. So there's like a dot here and a dot here. So I can kind of be like, okay, that's where it needs to line up. And then I can put it back where it was. So if you're having a problem, if you bought one without a gap and now you're like, oh great, there's a gap in my hoop now. It's okay, it, you can fix it. Um, anyways, bamboo hoops, they're really great to start with. I used them for years and years. I still use them occasionally. Um, they're great. They just have a few quirks that you have to kind of figure out. So that's a bamboo hoop. The next option, let's keep talking about wood. Okay, so these are beech wood hoops. So these are a lot more circular. I have less problems with gaps. Um, but they are pricier. These are closer to like three to five dollars each versus like two dollars or a dollar fifty or whatever. So, but I don't have any problems with gaps, and usually I don't have a problem like if this twists to the side or something. I don't have that problem a lot. Um, there is issues like with needing it to be like sanded. I wish we could like zoom in. Um, but it kind of sometimes needs to be like sanded around this where it's been cut. I usually just take a nail file and just like file it down a little. It's not a big deal. Um, the hardware is really nice. Oh, that's what else I was going to say. If you can find one with like a screwdriver, either flathead or Phillips, it makes it easier when you need to tighten your hoop. I love using a screwdriver with my hoops to make them tighter. So if you can find... A lot of bamboo hoops don't, I mean, maybe not a lot, but some don't have that, like like that one has a flat head. Um, if you can find one with that, I recommend that because then you can get them nice and tight. But I've never had a problem with the beechwood hoops having that. And so it makes it a little bit easier to tighten. I mean, a lot of times I do it with my fingers and then I go back with a screwdriver. Um, but anyways, these are great. The hardware is really good. Um, so, that is option. Another option are these wood ones. These are a little bit thicker. You can kind of see the difference. You see how thick that is right there? So these are nice and sturdy. They hold really tight. 
Um, they're really, really good. I don't love the hardware because it's just like, this is the only thing holding it is this little, is it a nut? Anyways, that is my only complaint. Other than that, I really, really love these. This is like an off brand of the Nurge hoops, N-U-R-G-E, Nurge. Um, Nurge hoops are like $15 each. This one was not that much. Um, maybe closer to like 10, eight, nine, 10, somewhere in there. But they're really, really nice um, if you're wanting something to look a little bit more professional maybe. Um, you can also stain these. You can stain these too, but they don't stain perfectly. So anyways, there's that. I've never tried staining the beech wood, so I don't know about that. Okay, so the uh, that's our wood options. The other options we have are plastic. Um, there is lots of different plastic options as well. So let me just tell you about a few of them. So there's, this one is older. I don't even know if they sell these ones anymore, but what you're looking for with a plastic hoop is one with a groove, okay? So you've got this groove and then the inside fits inside of it. So it will hold your fabric tight. They come in tons of colors. People have been liking them a lot more in the last few years. And so there's tons of colors there. You've got cream and pink and teal and black and brown and tons of options. So this one is an older one. It's a little bit cheaper. Um, it looks similar to the ones that you can find that are like plastic like this. If you find one that's like plastic and it's just flat against each other, that's not gonna hold your fabric very well. So don't buy that. They're cheap and just try to avoid it if you can. Um, just because it doesn't hold the fabric, the fabric will slip between these two because there's nothing to grip it. That's why we're looking for that groove because it'll hold your fabric in there nice and tight, okay? You're more likely to find this kind of plastic hoop at the craft store. So this one is a newer one. It's a little bit smoother, but it has the same thing. It has this here, and then it's got the groove on the inside. Um, this one is one I got at Michael's. It's like the Loops and Threads brand. Um, they're really good. I have a whole set. I like to stitch in these, but I never finish in these. So I stitch in it and then I move it to like a, um, a beechwood hoop to finish it. So, but these hold the fabric so tight. They're really, really, really good. Um, the colors are a little bit obnoxious. I have one that's like neon orange. Um, I have another one that's like a bright turquoise. I have this like hot pink one. Um, but this is the one, this is the brand, like this is the similar quality to the ones that I've seen that are like prettier colors, like the teal and the cream and like the sage green and stuff. So anyways, plastic with a groove, good. Last one I'm gonna talk about is these faux wood hoops. So they're similar. They have like that groove where this fits in it. This is flexible. So, woo. so if you buy like an oval one, you can have an oval portrait or landscape that was opposite portrait or landscape. <laughs> Sorry, but it depends on like, this is just a round one, so it doesn't matter. But, um, these I feel like look great to finish in, but they're not great to stitch in. At least for me, it doesn't hold my fabric tight enough and it really frustrates me. So I usually will stitch in something like this and then move it to this to frame it. Um, but yeah, it just like pops, pops in there like that. It's a little bit harder when you've got a couple layers of fabric in there, but these are great. They're really cute and they're kind of in the middle on price range. They're like five to seven dollars each. So those are fun. There's lots of other options for hoops out there, um, ranging from really expensive to really cheap. So um, I used to recommend Auburn hoops, but they are taking a break. Um, so they're not selling any right now, but those were really good ones. Um, that's all I have to say about hoops. Okay, next up is scissors. Now you can go so cheap with scissors. You don't have to buy anything fancy. You can just, anything that cuts thread works. Like you don't, 
You don't need to be crazy unless you want it. <laughs> like me, I love scissors. So fancy embroidery scissors are really fun. I have probably 12 pairs. They're fun. Anyways, they're really sharp. Um, these pointed ends help if you have to like cut a thread that's hooked in there somewhere. But they come in so many different colors and so many different shapes and they're just really fun. So this one is obviously like super fancy, but I have some that are like, like a unicorn one or like flower ones. Oh, this one is a flower. I have another one that's like this, but it's like butterfly wings. Anyways, embroidery scissors are really fun if you feel like splurging a little bit. They're usually somewhere between like 10 and $15. Um, my fabric scissors, I use these pretty regularly to cut thread if I don't have other scissors like sitting in front of me. Um, you could also use a seam ripper and then just cut your thread there. So if you already have a seam ripper, this is also great if you have to rip something out to redo it, seam rippers are good. Um, yeah, scissors, just whatever you have. Okay, last thing I'm gonna talk about is um, a fabric pen. So fabric pen, pencil, marker, whatever. There's tons of different options. I don't own all of the options because some of them I don't like. So let me talk about the ones that I do have and then I'll tell you about the rest. Okay, so my first and favorite is the Pilot Friction Fine Liner Markers. I know it's a mouthful, but um, these have like a skinnier tip. Um, they are heat erasable. So when you draw and then you use this end is like rubber to erase, the, the friction creates heat which erases the pen. It doesn't erase it completely. This will leave ghost lines always like it will always leave ghost lines. But with embroidery, as long as you're not drawing crazy things all over, if you're just drawing your pattern, then your stitching will cover it up. You'll never notice. I've never had a problem with it, but there is that. Um, Pilot Friction also makes pens. They have clickable pens. They have um, stick pens. I like them, um, but my last one um, died and I just haven't replaced them because I have a bunch of markers and I prefer the markers, so I've just never bought more. But they're really good as well. I've used them for years. I generally, in the pen and the marker, I usually try to avoid the lighter colors, the green, the orange, the pink. Um, they just don't erase very well. Um, and sometimes leave like a residue. So generally I would avoid the lighter colors. The black, the blue, the purple are all really great. Um, next option would be a heat erasable pen, which the Pilot Friction is, but I have been using these ones. They are really cute. They come with a bunch of different little guys, but these are also like really fine tip. They come in black or blue. Um, same thing, they have like this rubber end that they are heat erasable. So same thing, they will always leave a ghost line, but as long as you're not getting crazy, um, your embroidery should cover it up. So I have also never had an issue with these. I really like them. Um, another erasable line would be a water soluble marker. They're usually, I mean, you can sometimes find them in the embroidery aisle, but there are a lot of times like in the quilting aisle, they're usually blue or purple. Um, so what you do is you draw, and then when you're done, then you soak it and the water dissolves the ink. I personally don't wash my embroideries because I feel like it messes with the stitches. So I personally don't use those markers, but I know a lot of people that do. So if you have one or you use that, awesome. It is definitely an option. So they also make water soluble marking pencils. I just, I never use this, but I have it. This one's white. Um, I just don't feel like this erases quite as well as the, um, as the marker. So I generally don't ever use this. I don't think I've used it for, I don't think I've used it for years, but I just keep it so that I can show it to you in videos. Um, 
I think this one was in the quilting section as well. Same thing, you have to get it wet. And this one I feel like you have to scrub a little bit. I just realized I forgot one more. Let me see if I can find it. Hold on, hold on. Video quality is better by my windows, but my desk is over there. Okay, the last one, I swear I had everything, but you know, I didn't. So last thing is a chalk pencil. So this is Fonz and Porter. Um, there's another one, there's another company that makes them and they're the exact same. I think it's Boheen also makes one. Anyways, it's a mechanical pencil, but the lead is chalk. So this is great for dark fabrics. Um, it rubs off, so it's not great if you're doing like a really detailed piece, um, but it is an option. Um, they work really well. I've used them. I have. I bought the Fonz and Porter and the Boheen just because, you know, may as well have both to check them out. <laughs> um, but anyways, these are really great if you're drawing on like darker fabric, black or blue or something. And then I just rub it and it goes off and it goes away. So just like after I'm done stitching, I gently just like scrub it with my finger. Or sometimes I get like a baby toothbrush, a new one, not a used one, and <laughs> just like scrub it a little bit. Um, it's just chalk, so it'll just rub off. But these are great. Um, that's it. I do have a highlight um, with all of my favorite products. So if you want to check that out, it's like Amazon links. Um, that will take you to that. I will, once I'm done with this video, I will double check and make sure that all of those links still work. Oh, I was gonna do one more. <laughs> now, this is another that is like, not necessary, but it's really fun to have and something else that I collect. With my embroidery scissors, I also collect needle minders. So this one is from Giselle. Her account is Alice and the Bear. So this is a little pin cushion. So with needle minders, it's a magnet. So you've got the front and the back. What you do is you put this, you put this on your fabric. So that's on one side of your fabric, that's on the other. And then it holds your needles for you. So you don't lose a needle. They are fabulous. I don't have a single project that I don't use a needle minder with. Um, if it's a smaller project, I will sometimes like hook it to my hardware, but almost always it's like sitting on my fabric like this. Holds my needle for me so it doesn't get lost. Sometimes I even will put my needle like on the back so it doesn't get like knocked off like when I put it in a bag, but anyways. Needle minders are great. I probably have, I don't know, 12 or 13 of them. <laughs> They're fun. Anyways, needle minders are really great. I don't think I've ever linked these, so I will link these in my um, highlight. So if you want a needle minder, needle minders usually run anywhere from like 10 to $15. Um, you can find them all over Etsy. They're just called needle minders. So I will link my favorites in my highlights because I do have a few favorites. Anyways, okay, let me know if you have questions. I will be around all day. If you get out shopping and you have questions, message me. Um, I'm pretty good at getting to my messages quickly, like nine out of 10 times. So let me know and have fun shopping.